All right, so I'm um, just doing a quick video about how to do a Riemann sum in Desmos. So um, first of all, we're going to need a function that we want to find the sum for, and literally pick anything at this point, but sine is always nice. All right, um, we have to think about kind of what's our beginning x value and what's our end x value. So um, it's tradition to call them a and b, uh, but it's not an important convention. So uh, a, let's imagine a is zero to start, and b is two. So we're going to be looking for the area under the curve from zero to two, an approximation um, in one of these uh, Riemann sums that we call it. All right. So, uh, but B, we really don't want B to start until A, and then it can go to anywhere after A. Um, that's a fine little point. That's me being uh, geeky about the details. We have to think about how many rectangles do we want, right? And this, we want to be a whole number. Uh, we could have as few as one. We could have as many as. We could put in any number we want there. But we want it to be a whole number, so we'll make it step up by one each time. Okay, so um, the uh, you get a rima you get the sigma notation in Desmos by just typing sum, and we can change this uh, variable n if we want to i, which is what you'd see in more calculus books, but it's okay to leave it as n, and we want to add up those capital N rectangles. That's actually probably the best reason to change it is because we use capital N for how many, and then we wouldn't have to specify um, little n or big N. Okay, so we're going to be like sampling the function at these points. All right, and then multiplying times the width of the rectangles that we make. So let's try to figure out what should that width be? Well, that width, and so it's giving us an error message because, of course, we're, we don't have all the details filled in here. And we said w, but it doesn't know what w is. So the width is going to be however far uh, we're trying to cover divided up by however many um, divisions we're doing. Okay, so right here it's uh, 0.2. If we increase this, right, the width is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so uh, we could just write this like directly, uh, but of course, one of the benefits to working in Desmos is to use sliders, and then it's generalized. In math, we're always interested in generalizing. Okay, so how do we figure out what should go into the function? Well, here's where it matters if we're doing um, if we're doing left endpoint or right endpoint or uh, the midpoint or some other approximation. Okay, so imagine uh, we're going to start by doing left. So if we're doing left, I just want to write a note to myself, and that first point would be. Um, x equals a, and then the next one would be a plus however wide the division is. So in this case it would be 2.2. And then the next one would be a plus two of those widths. Okay, so that, that tells me enough to, for what I have to put in here. So I want a plus n times w. Except that's not quite right, because when n is equal to 1, that'll give me a plus w. Okay, so that's that's in... This is a right end approximation. Because the right would go... It would start at the end. That first interval goes from a to a plus w. So at the right it will go a plus w, a plus 2w, all the way up to 
The last one is going to be the capital nth one. Um, okay. So this, what we have is right now the right approximation. And we want to be able to compare that to the actual. So um, that is the integral. So if we type int, it will give us one of these integration signs. And the actual area is going to go from a to b. And we're integrating f of x. And we're thinking about x changing. So we're going to take rectangles that are an infinitesimal little dx thick. Okay, so we can see that's pretty close. That's ballpark. I think that's um, that's what we want. And if we increase the number of n, we can see it's getting smaller, getting closer to our value. Hmm. With 100, we're still a tenth away from what we'd want. So it's not a super accurate um, approximation, but it's pretty close. So how could I change this to get the left? So when n is 1, I don't want to add any um, w's. I just want a. So that makes me think that what we want for the left is to do n minus 1 here. So when n is 1, that gives us 0 w's. When n is 2, it gives us 1 w. I think that's what we want. Oh, and weird. Now you see it's like an underestimate. So as we increase n, it's getting bigger, getting closer. And after 100 divisions, we're still you know, about a tenth away. So not the most accurate it could be. I wonder if that midpoint approximation would be better. Um, so at the midpoint one, we'd want like the first one to be a plus a half of a w. It's writing it weird because uh, the quotes are what tells it that you want to write a note. So the midpoint, we want to go a plus a half a w, and then it would be a plus a half w plus a whole w. Okay, so um, what we want this to be is like that. Holy cow, even with 10, look at that, it's almost spot on. Um, the midpoint approximation, it's, it's common for it to be better. And look at that, with 100 steps, we've got like four decimal points of accuracy. That's nice. Okay, um, but that's how we can uh, build these Riemann sums in Desmos or in GeoGebra or in any kind of computation. It's really about figuring out an expression for where are we going to sample the function. Okay, so I want to just do a little more if we want to see these points. We could actually make a list here in um, Desmos, right? So if we make a list of the values, um, like say we want to see where these midpoint ones are, we wanted it to go A plus And then the last one would be a plus n minus 0.5 w. Let's give it a name. Like, I don't know, m for the midpoints. It's a 10 element list. And we're not seeing what the values are anywhere because we didn't make points or anything for it. So let's go ahead and make points. So that we want those to be the x values and then the y values to be putting those into the function. And so now we can see even kind of where those points are. Zoom in a little bit. So 
So that's nice. So we can see kind of we've got these segments, these divisions that are two tenths wide because we've got um, 10 divisions from zero to two. And our midpoints that we're sampling right at the middle. So you can see why it's so accurate, right? If we take the rectangle, we get a little too much on this side, a little too little on that side, and it averages out to be a really nice approximation, whether it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, and uh, that's how to approximate this. I'll put a link um, to this graph in the description and on our course page. Thanks.